Sean, I'm Kevin of the White Hornets Forum BX257 here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review and for my second Iron Grenadiers theme month I'm going to be taking a look at Destro's Frogmen, the 1990 Undertow. I thought I would start off with this guy because it makes a nice segue between the previous month's Navy theme. Now the Undertow doesn't make any comic book appearances in the old Marvel comic run but he makes his first animated appearance in the deep animated G.I. Joe episode, Revenge of the Pharaohs. Um, if you're wondering what an undertow is, I'm a little bit confused myself. I think it's a type of a current that washes up on the shore or something. Um, you, if you're curious, you might as well just Google it and see for yourself. Taking a look at the undertow's accessories first, his primary weapon is a trident. It's actually a very short trident with a very skinny shaft, which makes it a little bit difficult for him to hold it in his hands without having to wield it with both hands, but there's actually a reason for that which I'll get into later. Next he comes with a mask. Take it off, and it's held on by the short one and a half inch GI Joe standard wire, and it just plugs into the side of the rebreather portion and right onto his chest. There, it's actually a very interesting looking mask to be honest, because um, it only has one eye hole. It's kind of a death stroke, the Terminator vibe going on there. Not sure why you would obscure your uh, vision like that, but uh, hey. It's also um, very it's also a very thin and very flexible material. So while it's kind of sturdy, I can kind of imagine these things still being kind of broken fairly easily. Next, he comes with a pair of flippers. They're very um, they're very high tech and modern looking compared to what we'd seen before with the eels and the hydro vipers. It's actually very nice. Goes with the uh, color that he is overall, which is also very nice. It's not a contrasting color. Then he comes with what the contents uh, list on the car calls a riding skiff. And on the bottom of this, it comes with a torpedo which is just held in there with a peg. Obviously this is some type of uh, underwater jet ski type thing. Kind of like uh, kind of like a larger version of what the 1986 wetsuit came with. Now here's a very interesting thing about the figure is that he comes with a very it's very well designed and engineered because if you put his mask on and then put the uh, the hose and connect it to his chest like you're supposed to if you have him writing on here the hose actually kind of gets in the way of him sort of lying flat properly as a matter of fact if you want him to hold the handles I would actually suggest putting the hands around the skinny part of the bar rather than the actual grip because that's, well, it's just a lot easier for him to angle the hands that way. Again, this is just one of those things where a swiveling wrist would have been really nice on these old G.I. Joes because of the way the accessories are sort of molded. But that's one of the other unfortunate things is the um, figures and the accessories were probably molded by two different teams at Hasbro. So there might have been a bit of a miscommunication as to how these things go together. But one good communication thing is you can actually unhook it from his chest and hook it on to the riding skiff itself. So now that wire isn't really so much as in the way, but it's now a part of the riding skiff itself. And another thing, going back to the trident, if he's holding the riding skiff with both hands, where exactly does the trident go? Well, 
it doesn't say anything like this on the uh, content of uh, the card. It really would have been nice if there was instructions on here, but there isn't. You have to go by the artwork and see how this this trident is actually just kind of sticking out of its back. In fact, his back has a very deep spinal ridge. So much so that it actually kind of opens up a hole between the torso portion and the waist piece. This is the one time which Hasbro actually took advantage of the sort of bad placement of how the hip and the torso meet. So you just use that portion, put it in there, and that's the storage. That's really neat. Again, this is something that a lot of collectors actually discovered well after the fact. And it would have been really cool if they had actually put instructions in there, but no. Nope. You have to discover all this stuff for yourself. Well, last but not least, not really one of its accessories. I generally don't consider these animal friends to be accessories, but he comes with a Barracuda. A very uh, somewhat pliable fish here. Barracudas are known to be very large, very fast, and very aggressive um, fish with uh, very sharp teeth. But they're not man-killers. So while it's kind of cool in the sense of, of you know, barracudas being um, just sort of aggressive fish, I'm not quite sure why he has one instead of something like a shark or something. While I know I sort of complain about the color schemes of some of the Iron Grandier's figures not really matching the overall tone of how it went before. The 1988 uh, Iron Grenadiers had a very black, red, and gold color scheme matching throughout, except for the occasional fuchsia and beige for some reason. But that all gets thrown out the window in 1989, and 1990 it doesn't really help but very much either, although it does bring back that really dark red and some little black accents. But I can't overall complain about the color scheme of the undertow because, well, to be honest, I think it looks very appropriate for a frogman, to be honest. It's really only the dark red which kind of throws everything off, and that's one of the Iron Grenadier staple colors, so I can't really complain. The actual color scheme on the figure is really well, and so are the paint tabs. Like this portion, so sort of a sort of half stripe on his shoulder, actually goes all the way up so it's a nice little continuation which I don't think that they normally do on these figures just like the inside of his collar is picked out in black that's another thing that I don't think Hasbro generally does they usually cheap out on that sort of uh, additional paint app without the uh, without the mask on he is a very plain looking face sculpt but then he is a generic figure after all, so that's okay too. The Undertow is the first and only Iron Grenadier Frogman, or Navy figure in general, in the Iron Grenadiers line. And I think he does a really good job of it, so, well, I don't think he really needed an update. But at least to compare him to similar figures, we have the 1985 Cobra Eels, which shares the overall grey wetsuit paint scheme, though with a little pop of red. That's very interesting that they went and copied that. What's even more interesting is that, well, we have the 1988 Hydro Viper, who is very monstrous, very sort of organic in design. So we have kind of things going a bit forward and then backwards uh, as far as the villainous frogmen go. One interesting thing I, I do want to note is that... Um, for a primary weapon, the Undertow only has this trident. Now, I can just assume that this, you know, fires off, like, electricity or something like that, like a stun, a stun baton or something like that, but it's not explicitly stated that in the, um, on the file card or on the card listing. I don't think they even use these things in the cartoon, as far as I remember. Interestingly enough, you would think that the Hydro Viper, with all his demonic appearance, 
would have come with this staff, this trident, almost pitchfork-like trident, actually. But he comes with this rather normal-looking um, harpoon gun. Should have really have switched that around. So who would the Undertow's primary rival from the G.I. Joe team be? Well, in the same year that he was released, we also have two G.I. Joe Navy servicemen. One of them being the 1990 Rampart, who is an air defense artillery man, so I don't think that that would be a proper matchup. But then, neither is the 1990 top side. He isn't a scuba diver either. But he is a Navy fighter, a Navy sailor. And I'm pretty sure that the undertow would have to surface at some point, And these two could have a good match off there. But as far as a scuba diver goes, we have to go right back to 1986 for wetsuit. And that's a little bit kind of old um, for a matchup. The closest we have is the 1989 Deep Six, who is a deep sea diver rather than a scuba diver. But I think that this matches up really well. I think the uh, scuba diver equipment for the undertow would actually allow him to go fairly well deep into Deep Six territory. If you're looking for an undertow on the aftermarket, he is actually a fairly well produced figure. So you should be able to find him complete with all of his accessories fairly easily. He's also not a very popular figure as far as all the other Iron Grenadiers are go, so you should be paying a relatively low price for him. Now, I'm not quite sure why he isn't quite as popular as the other Iron Grenadiers figures. He's well appointed and I think he looks cool. But there are no other Navy or aquatic Iron Grenadier figures for him to go with and certainly no vehicles for him to tag along on, so... I guess he's just kind of that one-off figure that if you don't have him in your Iron Grandier's collection, you're sort of not missing him either. Of course, the other main thing is that the mask is often missing with this figure. So that's really the primary thing that you really ought to look for if you're trying to find one complete on the aftermarket. The other 1990, the large use of dark red is pretty well matching with most of the Iron Grenadiers that were issued. Well, of course, the odd man out being the Annihilator, but we'll get to him in another review. I'm not sure if it gets broken or, or what, but I often find this figure... Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.